In a previous video, we talked all about setting up a new printer inside of Purchase Slicer, particularly the SV06 from Sovol. So this begs the question, is it the slicer or is it the printer? Let's find out. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, and if you're new here and you're looking to get that slicer profile tuned in, make sure to leave a like and get subscribed. As I said in the intro, we talked previously about adding a custom printer to Prusa Slicer, which we will card to if you did miss it or want to get a refresher. But now we want to find out, is it hardware or software that tends to make the printer. We're going to print the exact same part with the exact same settings on two different printers. The only thing we're going to change is to go from the Sovol SV06 here in Prusa Slicer up to the Mark S. We're not even going to move the position of the Benchy. And remember, if you are a member of our Patreon, which you can join for as little as $1 a month, we also have YouTube channel members and now PayPal option listed in that description down below. If you do want to support the channel financially, I will provide you and already have provided you with the Solval SV06 profile. So if that's your kind of thing and you're looking to just click it over to easy mode, I got you covered and you just got to change the bed size for the SV06 Plus or so I'm told I don't have one of those yet. One thing to note, I am not going to run a stock profile. The stock Prusa Slicer PLA quality profile is way too slow. And no matter honestly what printer we put this on, it's likely going to print just fine. So I'm going to mess around with some settings. We're going to crank the speeds up and see if we can really find where the $800 Mark III S kit can outperform the $250-ish Sovol SV06 because it's got most of the features of a Mark III S. So upping our external perimeters will allow us to see if there is any ringing. It will make it very obvious. Same thing with solid infill the faster we go the harder we can basically push these machines we don't care about sport material here for bridging i'm gonna leave it at 25 everything else here is just fine and the first layer because i am feeling lazy we're gonna speed it up to 30. we will go ahead and also change over to adaptive cubic much faster in terms of printing mark 3 is showing an hour and 12 minutes and if we go over to the sv06 here hour and 11 hour 12. so this should be interesting. Let's go get these printers set up. Let's get some files sliced and I'll see you guys on the other set. Machines are here, loaded with as close to everything identical as we can, including the same filament, same color from the same batch number even. So let's get to printing. Prints are done and they pretty much finished at the same time. That says a lot considering they ran the exact same settings. We're letting the beds cool down a little bit, but then we're gonna really take a look at these things up close and personal. Looking at these two benches, I mean, realistically, they're the same. You can tell which is which because of the bottoms. I clearly don't have my first layer dialed in all that well on the SV06. So you can't really see the CT3D logo. The bow looks basically the same on them. How does bridging look? I'm gonna have to give it to the MK3. How about the back logo? How's that look? We have a seam that runs up that back logo, but again, it's identical on both, so we don't have to worry about that too much. What about on this side? I'm seeing a little bit more artifacting, especially the couple of lines up near the front window on the SV06. But I mean, otherwise, I'll be damned. Those are two basically perfect benches from a printer that is over a thousand brand new, assembled, and $250 assembled. There was a little bit of stringing on both of them. We likely ran the temps a little bit too high. So got the yield string remover 9001 here. There we go. I will say definitely have some better extrusion on that top surface. It looks like we have a little bit of over extrusion from the SV06. This to me proves that software matters more than hardware. The Sovol is pretty much a Mark 3S clone with all metal, direct drive, flexible build plate, dual Z, ball bearings everywhere, and a roughly similar inductive probe setup. Now that's not to say that a Ender 3 
wouldn't perform like this. But you will have to know the limitations of your hardware. And Ender 3, only having cooling on one side means you're gonna be limited in the amount of speed that you can run your bench yet simply because you gotta get cooling to where it matters. Things like since the Ender 3's fan is normally off to the, its right side, if you wanna blow air onto it, you don't want the benchy pointed this way. That means the bow won't get the cooling that it's needing. So you'd wanna point it toward the right side of the printer. But with the SV06, it has a similar fan duct. To be clear though, it's running like a 3010 fan versus the 50 by 15 millimeter blower on the Prusa. But this does also beg the question, 250 brand new, pretty much assembled, it's like a 30 minute assembly time, or $1,200 out of the box fully assembled, ready to go, or 800 as a kit. Yeah, you can kind of see where I'm going. This printer provides a lot of value for the money and we can see that with similar settings, well, identical settings, just a little bit of a different size of the build plate, you can get damn near the same results when it comes to the quality of your prints. Now, we will have to do some tuning on the SV06, which the Prusa never needed it. It runs just fine, but I would definitely say that there is a little bit of extra over extrusion on the SV06. And we can see that on that top surface of the Benchy. We can see a little bit of rippling in the SV06 Benchy, whereas the Prusa Benchy looks pretty clean on the top. There's a lot of bang for the buck here, and I really like the Sobels, and for the money, I think they're very hard to beat. But I do think we could get similar out of a Creality, Ender, whatever you're looking for. Mind you, an upgrading cooling duct would give you tons better performance. Something like a Pets Fang or something like that would give you much better performance from an Ender 3 than its stock fan. But when we look at printers in their stock form, or mostly stock form, all the upgrades we've done to the Mark 3S are all quality of life. They don't change anything. But when it comes down to it, while I will give the win to the Mark 3S, it's like a 10 versus a 9.8. They're so close, you could give those benchies to people and no one's gonna really critique them, right? They both look pretty darn good. I believe the slicer has a lot to do with this. Although the hardware does help, I do believe the software helps out as well. If you'd like to see me test this up against something like the Ender 3 V2, let me know in those comments below and we'll get that scheduled for a future video because I think that would actually be a really cool topic. You will be limited because the non all metal hot end means you're basically limited to about 60 to 65 millimeters per second on your speed with something like a Creality and the motion system doesn't really let you do much more until you start running things like Clipper and go to an all metal metal hot end, which we're going to get into that eventually. That's a soon TM kind of thing. I'm still a little hesitant on the clipper side of things. But yeah, guys, I'd love to know what you think. If you want to see this tested with other machines to see, can you get similar results with the same slicer settings and really making sure that your slicer is tuned for your printer? I believe that you can. And at some point you'll be limited by hardware but if you have bad software, you could have some of the best hardware in the business hell bring a bamboo out here. And you're still going to run into these problems if your software isn't feeding it what it needs to have. Cura did just come out with some new features as well. So let me know if you guys want to see those covered. My buddy Dom sent the press release over to me and I am really curious. I just don't know a ton about Cura. But if you guys do want to see it, I'll read up a little bit, see what we can Pull from it. But that is all I have for you guys today. Let me know down in those comments what you think of all of this because there is a lot to take in here when you run identical settings on completely separate printers. One from the Czech Republic, one from mainland China. Love to know what you guys think and if you do want to see more videos on this topic. A full review on the SV06 is coming soon, so get subscribed if that's your kind of thing. And uh, hey, get subscribed anyways. We'd love to have your support. We just passed 20,000 subscribers. Thank you all. We had almost an entire week of over 100,000 views a day, which is just insane to me with our best day being over 500 subscribers gained in a day. It's Kind of crazy when your channel goes all hockey stick likes. So thank you all for your support. And I am incredibly grateful. And so is the entire team at 3D Musketeers. But that's all I have for you guys today. Stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones. And as always, keep making awesome. Have a good one.
Hey, thanks so much for watching this video, and a massive thank you goes out to all of our Patreon and YouTube channel member supporters whose names are listed right next to me at the $5 tier and higher. If you do want to support the channel financially, you can click those links in that description, and now with a PayPal option as well, with tiers starting as low as $1 a month to help this channel grow and allow our editor, Andrew, the freedom to play with his brand new portable monitor that we hooked him up with recently. I'm so glad that we were finally able to do that, and it wouldn't be possible without the support of members and viewers just like you. Thank you. Right below me will be the live stream where we unboxed and checked out a pair of Solval SV06s and had them running and printing in under two hours. These things are truly incredible value for what they are. And remember, full review coming soon. Right next to that will be the series on Prusa Slicer, so you can see its growth, where it's at now, and all the awesome features that are coming soon. I will see you all down in those comments and in the next one. Take care.